caste system described by Plato in his records of Critias's accounting of Atlantis to Socrates in his Republic. This work, beloved by early Catholic Neoplatonists, inspired the City on a Hill of St. Anselm, Christianopolis by Cretan de Troy, and The New Atlantis by Roger Bacon, as well as being, at the time of the Founding Fathers' drafting of the U.S. Constitution, a Masonic craft tool, the Beehive, symbol of the industriousness of a hive mind populated by neuter drones that had been adopted by Napoleon as a symbol of his hopes for a French empire. In the class hierarchy envisioned by Plato in his Republic, slaves are the base, serfs the middle class, and philosopher kings reign over and above all. The Christian symbol for God, the all-seeing eye in a triangular halo, hovers over the base symbolizing the missing capstone motif present in contemporary Masonic rituals. In Masonic lore, the lecture signified that the stone the builders rejected was the missing capstone, not of a pyramid, but of the royal arch of the Temple of Solomon. Again, the symbol for Christ as the stone the builders rejected is here replaced with a contrary meaning symbol depicting the usurpation by the Catholic Trinity concept of the monotheist God over the work of Pharaoh's slaves in ancient Egypt, underworld home of the dead. However, the eye in the triangle atop the pyramid with no capstone motif is not a valid Christian symbol for God, not even for the Catholic concept of the Trinity. Because it has three corner tips, three inner angles, three side lines, and is an equilateral triangle, one able to have interior corner angles up to 90 degrees each, and then only on a spherical surface, it can be a symbol of the Trinity and thus of the triune nature of the Divine Godhead. However, because the all-seeing eye is peeking through this halo, presumably from a heaven beyond the mere veiling it from our own world, it constitutes a fourth trait, which combines with the Trinity to imply that God is not of a triune nature, as Catholicism stipulates, but is actually an idolatrous image signifying on a flat plane space the implication into our own realm in the 3D world of an imaginary point where none exists, rising above the triangle at the height of the eye to form a conceptual tetrahedron. The iris of the all-seeing eye, commonly called the Eye of Providence, is peculiar in this depiction from its depiction in any other source, be it a Catholic faith painting of the Last Supper by Erasmus, or on the folded overflap on the Freemasonic apron of America's first president. In the regard that the iris is not depicted realistically, we can propose thus it is not meant as an image glorifying the enrapturement of man's mind by thoughts of God, but as an icon signifying something removed from reality by imaginative symbolism, relegating the potential beautitude of its art to a mere pop logo of 200-year pre-data surrealist expressionism. The iris, as we can see here in this extreme magnification of the image, shown on the back of every single U.S. $1 Federal Reserve note printed since 1936, is comprised of three concentric circles. The real meaning of these three concentric circles, replacing the ordinary patterns of the iris, of the all-seeing eye of God, is not known. They are not present in the original designs for the reverse side of the new U.S. nation's Great Seal. However, by the time the final galley proof was approved for printing of the symbol onto the back of the first pressed U.S. $1 Federal Reserve notes with it on them in around 1935, the eye had an iris of three concentric circles. This detail of the picture is so small in the printed version of it on our paper cache 
that almost everyone would likely overlook it and not see it at all, ever. However, to those aware of it, its originally intended meaning can only be speculated upon. Some believe it to be an Illuminati addition to the motif, meant to appeal toward the three degrees of Blue Lodge masonry as signifying three steps up toward the pupil of the eye, symbolizing the lodge door, leading to an age of gold and enlightenment. Here we see the pupil of the eye shown on money that supposedly depicts the eye of the one true, universally known and generally accepted monotheist concept of God. The eye itself has a placid, calm, complacent, and serene glint that causes it to appear lazy, slackened, flaccid, and tired. The eye appears alike that of the oriental tankas of Buddha achieving nirvana. It transcends enlightenment. It encompasses serenity. The fact the ink used to print this image on money is green is no grave mistake either. Green's negative influences range only as deeply afield as jealousy and greed, while its highest levels of mental stimulation of subconscious inspiration are at most lust towards vegetative photosynthesis. Green is the central, neutral, or hermaphroditic color on the rainbow spectrum, and the balance in it of blue to yellow determines its ability to feed on light rays and thus leech also off our own brain waves. This image of a window to the soul of our supposed God printed on the back of cash is a wormhole through which the value of our money evaporates. Yet the half-dark, half-light, yin-yang-esque pupil of the green all-seeing eye in the triangle atop the thirteen-step pyramid printed as the reverse Great Seal of the USA on the back of a one-dollar Federal Reserve note is only one side of the depiction of this great beast of the Christian apocalypse by St. John of Patmos, here rendered as a blasphemy to the monotheist concept of a one true God. The other shows us the national bird, the bald eagle, holding in its talons on our right the thirteen weapons of war, called by Shakespeare in Hamlet the slings and arrows of outrageous fortune, and in the talons on our left the thirteen-petaled olive branch offered to Noah as a gift from God by the dove he sent out to find land from the ark after the flood, symbolizing peace. Just as the reverse of the great seal is labeled the great seal, on the reverse of the one dollar bill. So too is the front of the great seal on the back of the one dollar bill labeled of the United States. The pyramid symbol is labeled the great seal and the eagle is labeled of the United States to symbolize the autonomous authority of a sovereign individual of one over the other. The great seal or pyramid is subliminally dominant in to the eagle, which also faces to our left the location on the back of the bill where the pyramid is. However, the pyramid symbolizes the god of money and the eagle the state power of the USA. The eagle's wings are upraised in flight and its torso concealed behind a shield comprised of 13 vertical and 13 horizontal stripes again symbolizing the 13 original colonies to ratify the American Declaration of Independence from Great Britain. In its beak, it grips a banner reading E Pluribus Unum, the Latinization of the saying popularized in the Enlightenment-era rationalist Alexandre Dumas' novel about the decades earlier revolution in France to overthrow Louis XVI, the Man in the Iron Mask, where it was the battle cry of his fictionalized version of the contemporary musketeers. E pluribus unum, also not an authentically Latin saying in its original use, means all for one, and from the battle cry of the musketeers goes in its complete context all for one and one for all. 
The eagle, as it appears here, is exactly identical to the symbol on the seal for the executive branch of the U.S. government in every detail except for one shown here, but absent from the seal of the commander-in-chief. The star made out of smaller stars, i.e. a constellation, above the eagle is, again, purely expressionistic symbolism and not meant to symbolize any real constellation in the north or south hemisphere. It is in the form of a hexagram pattern comprised of 13 smaller pentagon stars within its constellation system. The 13 pentagrams most probably symbolize the 13 founding colonies of the USA and their arrangement as pentagrams into the pattern of a hexagram is an unmistakably Masonic artistic device used to signify the microcosm of pentacles within the macrocosmos or hexagram alike the many souls of the one spirit again traits attributed to the one true God this stellation is amended to by 28 outward radiating in four quadrants of seven each lines signifying its emanating light. The next aspect of this diagram outlining in clear plain sight the body and tongue of the great beast significant of Satan to those who worship money is the head of the American national emblem a male bald eagle. The masculinity of the eagle is a symbol of the national spirit's virility its glare supposedly our military's acute attentivity and its strength supposedly symbolic of the potential for a combined focus of effort by the whole American population. However, the upturned feather at the back of the eagle's brow is symbolic not of the eagle nor any trait of its own, but is meant to be morally reminiscent to the fable of the fiery phoenix by hinting at the U.S. potential contemporary to the minting of this image on money for developing nuclear atom-splitting bomb technology. The original confusion of the eagle and phoenix began in Dark Age painted art by alchemists. The parable of the one bird with two heads, one fledged with feathers, and the other bald, without any feathers yet grown in, traces back to the earliest depictions of the double-headed eagle motif used first by the Habsburgs and Romanovs of Bulgaria and Russia, then by the House of Rothschild, and finally adopted as a symbol of the 32nd right status of Scottish right free and accepted masonry. The role of the eagle hinting at the dual nature of the hawk or phoenix firebird symbol is because the hawk is the dual heads of the Habsburg family, the bald eagle of the Scottish Rite Freemasons' highest degrees, the vulture, raven or turkey hawk, the heads of the Romanovs clan, and so on and so forth. Thus the bald eagle signifying the unfledged nation arising in power, alike a phoenix from the ashes of war and peace, is also only symbolic in a larger, older set of alphabetic symbols of our own fledgling nation's military might. This great beast chosen as our national leviathan, from the zodiac of all possible choices, holds forth the banner stating, All for One, before a constellation shaped like the Star of David, seen later on the flag of Israel, comprised of pentagrams, often associated with Satanism, or with the U.S. Pentagon military headquarters. Having now seen the symbolic paths taken by the dual eyes of Satan and Moloch on the back of the one dollar bill, we can now examine the third aspect in this triangular dialectic, the first man on top of the entire worldwide occult network pyramid, George Washington. Just as the eye atop the pyramid symbolized the way of the civilizer and the eagle symbolized the way of the warrior, so does George Washington symbolize the way of the wanderer in this triumvirate of transcendentalist mind-state motives for socializing motion. While the warrior ignites off the civilizer's fuel 